Thank you, Elizabeth, and warm welcome on behalf of SATA European Solidarity Corps. We are a small team located in Vienna, uh, responsible for supporting uh, the European Commission's uh, program, the uh, European Solidarity Corps program. You will hear more about that from Gosha, uh, our guest from the Commission later on. And our mission is also to promote solidarity and volunteering all over Europe. Uh, within this uh, frame, we decided to uh, set up these webinars uh, three years ago for the first time, uh, always at this time of the year in, uh, near December, which is the month of solidarity. And we address uh, the topic from different angles. In this year, we choose uh, the topic of uh, democratic participation, and we explore how solidarity, volunteering, and democratic participation connect to each other. So that was the reason why we teamed up with SATO Participation and Information. Hello. I guess it's my time. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Louis Biazin from SATO Participation and Information. We are a small team in a small country uh, based in uh, Tallinn, Estonia, uh, hosted by the Estonian National Agency. And our focus, as you can imagine, is on participation in democratic life, active citizenship. We also explore topics related to media and information literacy. Uh, so for us, it was natural to join uh, SATO ESC on this series of webinar to explore how solidarity and uh, participation in democratic life can uh, can. Um, much <laughs> and uh, join up in this effort in the context of the elections, especially uh, that are coming up next year. So I'm very glad to represent our team today. Uh, we will meet again uh, next week and the week after, and on the 7th and on the 14th of December, on the 7th to explore more uh, digital transformation, AI and augmented realities. And uh, on the 14th to be specifically talking about the elections and how youth participation and volunteering can impact uh, the elections in 2024. Uh, before I leave the floor, I would just want like to mention that uh, we have the participation pool platform uh, that uh, some of you might know with resources and tools to develop participation uh, within the programs, Erasmus Plus and European Solidarity Corps. I will leave the links in the chat uh, if you want to have a look. And we are also looking for uh, resources linked to the election. So we are perfectly in the topic. So if you have anything to share, please answer the call and have a good webinar. Thank you. Thank you too. Um, so the invitation is already there to um, join the next webinars. Uh, but first of all, let's start this one and uh, have um, an interesting talk and discussion together. We have four wonderful guests for the next uh, one and a half hours. Uh, with short inputs and then a panel and the opportunity to ask questions and to hopefully discuss a bit these, uh, these important connections and topics. We had a short introduction, but it would also be interesting to see a bit who is here and who is with us. And uh, therefore we prepared a very small, uh, so let's call it survey or a poll in the, in the Zoom. And therefore I would ask you, we'll open a, um, a Zoom poll with two small questions to see who is with us. So the first question, as you can hopefully see, is connected to the level of experience uh, with a European Solidarity Corps and Erasmus Plus programs. And if the approbation of ESC sounds weird to you already, <laughs> so maybe this is an indication, or if you have a lot of experience in the program, also for us to see and to have a bit of an understanding. How it is. And the second question connected to that also, in which function or role do you join us? As a project manager, as a youth worker, as a young person. If it's something completely else, please feel free to use the chat and to um, specify a bit also for us that we have a bit of an idea and also for our fantastic guests and speakers to have the opportunity to connect to whom is here.
And uh, I think uh, quite some people answered already. So maybe we can stop the survey and see so that everybody can see and have an idea. Can you see it now? Can you see the results on the screen? Okay. Perfect. So we have quite some people answering with a lot of experience um, or even really a lot of experience. So maybe that's interesting for you talking and connecting the program uh, afterwards. And if you scroll down also, it's quite mixed group. So quite a lot of people who would consider themselves project manager, coordinator officers, uh, and some youth workers, some volunteers, also some teachers and trainers, researchers, and some others. So I think that's a really interesting discussion opportunities and maybe connected to that uh, discussing, we have quite a tight program, but still we want to have the offer to ask questions or to connect to the topics that are discussed and presented. So we of course have the chat. So whenever you come up with a question or a comment, please feel free to use the chat and to comment, comment on it. We also have a Mentimeter prepared also for the opportunity to ask in an anonymous way. So if you rather prefer to use the Mentimeter, the link will be in the chat in, in a moment or is already in the chat. So whenever you uh, a question pops up, please feel free to write it there. We'll have it in our minds and try to connect to it. You can also use the emojis and the reaction buttons in the Zoom. Um, to see and to connect to the different inputs. And one last word from my side before I pass over to the first uh, guest speaker, we have uh, Agne with us and she is um, supporting and recording, let's say the whole webinar in a digital way. So you should be able to see her screen right now. So you can see a lot of colorful pictures already. And um, if you want to see what she's doing and observe a bit the process, you can always pin her picture and the, the window, the, the Zoom window for yourself. This is just as a reminder, the three, the three dots on the right side of the picture, you can decide or choose to pin her. If you want to, for the moment, she is she's visible for everybody. And what is visible at the moment is also the first task. We also ask our guest speakers, but we'll also invite you to think about. There is some nice pictures and icons that are uh, a train or a banana or a toolbox, an ice cream, so very different ones. And uh, we invite you for a sort of creative association. When you think about volunteering, solidarity, or democratic participation, how does it link to one of those icons? So the idea is find a ni nice association. For example, um, volunteering is like a, a bouquet of flowers because it's a lot, a lot of different colors, a lot of different co uh, flowers, a lot of different uh, smells even. And all together, that's the special thing about it. The, the more colorful it is, the the nicer it is to have. So this is one possible option. Please feel free to come up with associations whenever you want to and put them in the chat. Uh, will be fantastic to, from time to time to see one of the associations. We will send you also uh, the picture in the chat so then you can open it for yourself and come back to it. And maybe if something connects to you while you listen to the different inputs and you find a nice association, so whenever, you want to share it with us uh, that we have a bit of an interactive possibility and a possibility to react and to um, be in contact, uh, though it's a, it's a webinar, but they have been a bit of a yeah interactive situation. I think that's that's it from from my side for the moment. You've been listening to me quite a quite a, quite a while already. I will now pass the floor to Gosha. 
our, our first uh, guest and speaker, and I would ask you to present yourself. And yes, thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. I'm Goja Kozlowska. I'm a program manager in the European Commission in the unit responsible for <clears throat> youth programs. Uh, so it's the Erasmus Youth Program and European Solidarity Corps. And I'm mainly dealing with the European Solidarity Corps and solidarity projects in the Solidarity Corps program. Um, so I, um, it's a big pleasure for me to be part of the discussion about the role of the programs uh, in strengthening democracy. It's a very, very vast team subject. So I will choose some, I had to choose what to talk about. And I will say a few words, uh, as I believe that um, the youth programs we are promoting and implementing are actually <clears throat> powerful instrument in encouraging uh, the democratic spirit uh, for young people. And uh, these programs uh, <clears throat> sorry, are intended to, uh, before yesterday, we launched the new calls for. OK. <laughs> um, I'm a bit afraid that. <laughs> We... Did I disagree? Am I back? Uh, not yet. Let's give it a second try. Gosha, you were gone for a moment and we could I'm not noticed. hear you. We'll try to put the spotlight on you once again. Uh, we can't see you. Uh, I'm here, yeah. We can hear you. Okay. Uh, maybe the connection is, is not perfect at the moment. Um, I, I virtually try to look at Krista. <laughs> and um, I propose uh, that, uh, Gosha, you try to reconnect. And uh, we uh, will, we have some more nice inputs. And I would uh, propose to go on with Chris and I try to reconnect with Gosha later on because it's uh, important to also have her point of view and it would be a pity if we miss half of it by not understanding it. So I'm, I'm here now. I don't know if you can hear me, but... Uh... <laughs> no? Can, can we hear me let's... <laughs> let's give it a last try. I'm sorry. I'm in the office. It's not my fault, the connection. <laughs> Now we can hear you and we can see you. Uh, I was introducing uh, Chris already, but please go on and <laughs> hope that okay, I'm sorry for this. It's really not my fault and I hope I will not disappear again. <laughs> I will try I to so hurry up. <laughs> okay, um, so I was saying that actually it's a very good moment to talk about our programs because yesterday and the day before yesterday, we launched the uh, new calls for 2024. So there are plenty of opportunities Opportunities. You should check the different sources, websites, uh, the in Instagram and in Facebook and all the press releases that talked about the new calls. Uh, we have new uh, increased budget for 24, so it's, it's, it's a very important moment. But I wanted to talk how I see the impact of the programs on actually enhancing democracy uh, through uh, Erasmus Plus uh, Youth and through Solidarity Corps. And with first Erasmus uh, uh, program, it offers number, numerous um, opportunities uh, that has been providing young people with chance to study, train, and also before volunteering abroad. And it has become an incentive for personal growth and intercultural dialogue. And because the idea of democracy lies in empowerment of individuals through education and also to uh, exposure to diverse perspective. That's why I think that uh, Erasmus plays a key uh, role in this process. Uh, this program can break down the cultural barriers, promote intolerance, uh, cultivate a sense of identity. And so when young people engage uh, with their counterparts in uh, from different backgrounds, they can only they on they on not only gain academic knowledge, 
but uh, also develop crucial skills of empathy, ad adaptability, open-mindedness, and all of this is a foundation for democratic society. But also the second program, the, the Solidarity Core program, which, uh, also aimed at young people, was born to with this desire to build a more inclusive and compassionate Europe. And this program also provides young people with the chance to engage in solidarity activities uh, that can <clears throat> actually address important societal challenges. And here we have from volunteering in communities to supporting humanitarian aid projects. And we believe that participants in the program can um, uh, can bring a positive change um, because it's not only democracy is not only about governance but it's also about way of life so we believe that uh, it's built on active citizen particip participation and also sense of responsibility towards uh, others but uh, apart from, from focusing on the programs i would like to mention two other things uh, first is european year of youth this was a big initiative from the european commission in 2022 um, and this was meant to be a tribute to resilience of young people uh, that demonstrated during the COVID pandemic, and also a way to empower them to shape uh, Europe's future. The slogan was Voice Your Vision, and this aimed to give young people positive prospects and boost the participation in democratic life. And now we have some results of the year, and we see that it actually successfully triggered um, large-scale mobilization and engagement, and it showed uh, how institutions can be closer to, to young people. And a large number of young people could have experienced um, the EU add, adding value to their lives. So we are now working also of um, sustaining the legacy of the year. And we believe that the values that we wanted to promote through the year are still valid and we have to promote them further on. And also the second thing I wanted to mention is actually European elections because uh, they are coming soon in June 24. And um, it's very important to show that uh, young people should also engage in this democratic process. And because the next generation of MEPs will actually have a very deciding voice for the areas of concerns for the future of young people. And it will be health, environment, climate, education, training, peace, international cooperation or employment. So that's why it's crucial to, to engage young people, to, to, to convince them to vote and to ensure that they preferred representation in this um, uh, assembly, which is directly elected by, by for the European population. Um, so we will promote this engagement of young people uh, through European Youth Week, which will be events taking place in uh, April 2024. And uh, one of the objectives of the Youth Week is uh, empower young people to become active and en engage citizens. And uh, coming back to the programs and the role of the programs, I wanted to showcase two concrete actions uh, that uh, these programs are providing and gives uh, the young people the tools to, to, to learn and to participate. And one is youth participation activities under Erasmus Plus program. And the other one is solidarity projects under um, European Solidarity Core program. And these two formats were actually the flagships of the European Year of Youth as well with the increased budget. And they are very, they are similar in certain ways. Uh, they are both open to informal groups of young people and have a low threshold of our participation. In, in participation activities, we, we can have a form of civic action or youth activism. Um, there can be also a place for the dialogues, discussions between young people and decision makers. Um, and all this to promote democratic uh, participation uh, in life. Uh, of the young people. Our solidarity projects are very similar, but they focus on a grassroots initiative of young people that can have impact on the community around, around them. So I would like to strongly recommend to check these opportunities. I think that we will have also some possibility to listen to some people who, who participated in uh, some uh, of these actions. And, um, and the new calls are there, so it's a uh, nice moment to check them and to see how people could be involved. So to sum up, I believe that uh, both of these programs uh, offer unique advantages in promoting democracy. And this can <clears throat> be provided through learning, for, for, for fostering uh, cultural exchange, developing skills, 
for uh, encouraging community engagement. So I'm happy to, to be here and listen to, to our speakers. And I was not disconnected. Thanks a lot. Now it worked perfectly. Uh, we could hear you very well. And uh, reactions, whenever you feel like, just a sh short reminder, if you want to react, uh, use the chat, use the reaction button, uh, you're warmly welcome to do so. Uh, there's also a link in the chat connected to what Gosha was uh, referring to. Uh, so a good start, interesting topics and a reference to quite a lot of um, very interesting informations and upcoming and past activities. I will straight away, as I already invited you before, Chris, uh, it would, I would be uh, happy if you could join us now. Maybe also have a short association with you uh, on this creative topic. Uh, if you come up with an idea, it would be nice. And otherwise, welcome to this virt virtual stage. I'm uh, curious to hear what you have to say. Hello there. Hello, Elizabeth. Hello, everybody. Thank you for, for having me here. Um, and um, yes, uh, to be fair, uh, I, I do have a little uh, association when I noticed the po possibilities, uh, my, my, my attention got stuck to the rainbow as it always does. Uh, but so I, I thought, um, and uh, as you can see, my name is Krishanis or Krish for short, and I'm uh, here as a, a solidarity project officer from the Latvian National Agency. And so it had to be solidarity for me. So uh, I thought that in a, in many ways, I feel like maybe uh, Rainbow is, uh, is quite like the solidarity because it's uh, to be complete, it, uh, it takes uh, for every everything and everyone to come together in a way that like in order to create a rainbow, <laughs> you need uh, kind of the opposite uh, weather conditions to be there at the same time. And also you need all the colors for, um, for it to be there right next to each other. And, uh, um, and similarly, uh, solidarity can work uh, properly when everybody is involved. Um, so this was uh, my, uh, uh, my 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 little association um but yeah so um i'm here as a as i mentioned as the solidarity projects officer but uh, he, I, to be fair my experience with democracy and eu programs uh, is I, I have it maybe even longer as a more of a project beneficiary so i'm here somewhere on the on the fence uh, I, I've been with the Latvian National Agency for close to a year now, and, and and I've been focusing on solidarity projects. So I tried to, to condense down what I see, what are the like really concrete uh, uh, aspects of the EU, EU pro programs uh, in my experience that uh, does strengthen uh, and develop democracy, and uh, and this is. Um, these uh, five key points I you maybe uh, hopefully you see on the screen, which is uh, that the EU programs provide access to finance, knowledge and tools, validation of one's ideas, which I feel like is a very important thing, especially when it comes to youths already for many aspects that Gosha mentioned, um, access to the decision makers, which I feel like also is a key part uh, to uh, being involved in the democ democratic process. And it uh, provides access to ideas from over borders and also cooperation for this. Um, and um, yes, uh, and now in my work for the last year, mostly I've been uh, <clears throat> experiencing this through uh, through the two type of uh, two project types under the European Solidarity Corps project, which are the volunteering projects and solidarity projects that Gosha mentioned, and just uh, just the other week we actually had our annual event. Uh, so for that we also asked our uh, project beneficiaries to share with us some some stories about. Um, uh, about their experiences. And then I just also wanted to share uh, small short stories. Those are in Latvian. Sorry, I didn't translate, but I <laughs> I thought it's maybe the 
each little detail is not so um so important but yeah one of the inspiring stories for example for for uh from our solidarity project beneficiaries was this uh, about uh, what uh, uh yeah a group of young people in the region of latvia that have been <clears throat> uh, um, making public spaces uh, more green and reusing all sorts of uh waste materials in order to improve the public spaces uh, while doing so in cooperation with the local municipality and um, also yeah uh, essentially doing what gosha said taking their first uh, uh, steps in the you know participation and uh, making decisions uh, that are uh, you know meant for the whole uh, community and uh, another uh, nice example we received uh, for volunteering projects was about a Georgian girl uh, doing her voluntary project in a small, quite small town in uh, Latvia, uh, uh, starting uh, <clears throat> starting uh, as a you know complete foreigner outsider, and by the end of the project, being kind of. Uh, uh, the social glue in between different communities in the city, uh, also uh, promoting and uh, being the key to working together with municipality, also showing yeah how volunteering projects can uh, strengthen democracy, both through the development of the young people, but also just by um, well, which I'm what I mentioned already, this uh, over border experience exchange and cooperation uh, and then really shortly i know i'm <laughs> I, I i have problems with staying short but i uh, i just wanted to share a couple of projects i was part uh, i had the opportunity to participate in before i started working for the national agency because i think they were also really important and one of them actually was also a European Union finance program. It was a youth exchange. Actually, it was a combination of four youth exchanges and it was called Roots of Our Future, which was really impressive. I, I, I was really impressed by the organizing uh, team, but in essence, it, it was a project of almost a month where four different, um, four different teams of, uh, by 20 bicyclers uh, were, were pedaling over the whole Europe uh, to promote the previous European Parliament elections. So the idea was that we are doing uh, eco tourism while and promoting that, but on everywhere we would stop, we would do some activities to uh, remind people of the upcoming European Parliament elections. This was like something one and a half months before the previous elections, so quite uh, upcoming. And um, and yeah, you can see some like pictures of our adventures and our Latvian team. And um, uh, yeah, here you saw like uh, so. In the end, it was eighty bicyclers all all together. Um, but. Um, yeah, I guess this is a good combination just to <clears throat> give you an idea of what sorts of in what sorts of ways young people can get involved uh, also with decision makers. You as you can see here on the way, we got to meet different like officials from uh, municipalities. We were uh, participating in like scientific debates on uh, <laughs> climate change in university. Uh, uh, like uh, touching the topic of the of of, of nuclear energy and uh, in general, just every city we went to, we uh, promoted the European Parliament elections and and um, yeah, I feel like this was a great example uh, with great results. Um, another small uh, small initiative uh, uh, created by a dear friend of mine that uh, we participated in was for the last latvian parliamentary elections uh, where uh, she organized uh, and i helped her as a as a volunteer basically but youth and teenager elections in one city in latvia in parallel to the uh, parliamentary elections. So the idea was that uh, uh, the kids and uh, 
students until 18 would be able to also go to vote in the same places where their parents vote for the parliament. And depending on their age group, they would decide some very practical decision about their uh, hometown. As you can see, like uh, children and from uh, kindergarten could uh, decide what color will be the flowers next uh, spring. The middle-aged, not middle-aged, but the uh, students uh, until like 12 or so could decide on what sorts of uh, activity they will have in the park and uh, high schoolers could decide where will the uh, uh, drinking water place will be. And 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 there, was, uh, there were around one and a half thousand votes uh, in the end. And, um, and uh, as you can see, the, uh, the results came to be, uh, and this was one of the most important uh, objectives of the of the idea was to show young people that <laughs> the, there is a point in democracy that it should work and it can work uh, and yeah and uh, so and the next year uh, the same uh, the same idea will happen all in three different municipalities in Latvia for the upcoming European Parliament uh, parliamentary elections as well. And yeah, just a very short uh, other one, uh, just as Gosh also mentioned, the European Year of Youth. Uh, last year, I, I also had the great opportunity to organize and participate uh, in 20 different discussions around all of uh, small towns uh, around Latvia about what is the future of the EU uh, that the young people in regions of Latvia see and what they would like to see. And uh, we were trying to yeah, gather all these ideas and opinions and then and, and bring them back to the European Commission as this was a tender by the representation in, in, uh, in, uh, in Latvia. Uh, and yeah, and with this, we also gathered some something like uh yeah more than uh, uh more than 500 different ideas uh, that we combined um yeah i i definitely was way too long i'm sorry for that but this this i think is it for me uh <laughs> thank you for for listening to me and and and, and, and yeah and seeing my ways of uh, strengthening the <laughs> trying to strengthen democracy uh, over the years. And now, uh, yeah, hopefully I will continue, be able to continue to do so uh, via the, so the work, my work in uh, with European Solidarity Corps. Uh, I will stop sharing now. Yes. Thanks, Chris, for the very practical approaches and the underlining of what Gosha first explained and shared with us also in practical experiences and uh, projects you participated in. Thanks for that. Um, yes, uh, moving on straight away to, well, being the connection to national agencies, um, I would ask and invite Marie to join us. And maybe Marie, if you have an association for us, uh, I'd be very happy about that. All right. Uh, yeah, hello everyone, also from my side. Uh, my name is Marie. I'm working for the Estonian uh, National Agency as the Europeers Network Coordinator. Um, if you haven't heard of Europeers, then just a very brief introduction before I jump into my uh, association as well. Uh, the Europeers are a community of uh, former volunteers. So we are trying to build a network with people that have already been in touch with the programs and give them sort of a space and a community in which they can continue to grow and in which they can continue to uh, yeah, spread that spirit of volunteering, stay active and also actively partake as a citizen in our European countries and our European society. Uh, and connected to the work I do uh, as the Europeers coordinator and as a former volunteer as well, I have chosen uh, a volunteering uh, association. And for me, this was um, not, I think, on the list of paintings we have already seen. Um, but I chose to go with volunteering is like a set of wings that you grow 
So while you're volunteering, it's like growing a set of wings, lifting up from the ground where you are and changing your perspective. And ultimately, this activity shows you different angles of our reality and understanding different realities for me is the key of being active in a democracy. So I hope you can somewhat understand what I was trying to do here. Um, anyways, this is this is how I see volunteering. I think it's a very empowering um, experience. And that's also why I quite like to work uh, as a coordinator of a big network of volunteers. We, we were, I think, uh, created in 2005. Uh, I've been working for roughly two years now, trying to hold together um, 13 different European countries and former volunteers. And I think volunteering has a big influence on uh, participation uh, in societies because we learn a lot about ourselves, but also about others. And, and these learnings and these vivid European experiences, they don't stay just in this activity that you do. They follow you back home into where you came from uh, if you return. And then they continue to uh, influence the decisions we take if it's uh, educational pathways we choose or uh, even jobs we might end up taking. And I always find it funny that I'm a quite good example for this because I started somewhere confused as a young volunteer and now I continued in this path of staying in the network and trying maybe to also give back a bit to to the younger people by creating opportunities and uh, providing a space where ideas can grow. Um, yeah, I I do think that the Europeans can be a quite um, sort of practical and good example for how volunteering has an effect because the people that come together in our network, they're already uh, done with their volunteering service or their participation in a youth exchange. And yet they are so inspired that they want to stay engaged and they want to connect to other people that have this similar spirit. And I think this is uh, the sustainability that we have to sort of aim for. We have to focus on the people that want to stay in the system and we have to provide more opportunities for them. So um, as a practical example, sort of maybe what Europeans do, we uh, we do get active to spread the word about programs and we do it with a peer-to-peer -peer approach. So instead of having this practical teacher approach uh, or the theoretical approach where somebody tells you in your university and advertising somewhere about, hey, there's this uh, concept called European Union and they provide uh, opportunities to young people, aren't you interested? That's probably interesting and inspirational. However, you might not reach everyone in the target group that you're aiming for. So we're trying to uh, have the young people spread the word to other young people in their communities, in their bubbles. And by that approach, we hope to onboard uh, and also get a hold of other people that might not be thinking about going abroad, crossing borders, challenging themselves in the first place to go somewhere else, because maybe they already encounter a lot of issues and problems in their local communities. And uh, I hope at least that this is not only an idea that we actually succeed with this. And I, I try to focus on, 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 yeah, on single stories and authentic experiences. And this is what really gives the joy to me uh, to, to hear these uh, stories. A big approach of our network is storytelling. So not so much the, the advertising and promotion, it's, it's, it's the effect that we have by telling a story, we, we automatically advertise. And uh, yeah, I think the majority of volunteers in our network and one of them will be also having a little bit more of a talking space here later. So I'm extremely excited about this as well. Um, yeah, the, most of them are quite young when they enter the European community. Uh, and it's nice for me to see that many of them actually stick around and stay for a quite long time. And even when they're stopping their active uh, work as Europeans, then a lot of them are already in a professional career pathway that is somewhere in this bubble of European programs and they become part of agencies, they become part of SALTO resource centers or they work as trainers. So um, yeah, I hope we continue to uh, 
fascinate a lot of young people and uh, ultimately foster more democratic participation in our union. And that's uh, from me. I will keep it short so we save the time for our discussion later. Thank you so much for having me and for yeah, providing the space. Thank you. Uh, thanks for connecting these topics of volunteering and solidarity with your personal story and for this big network of Europeans and also the importance of storytelling and this personal contact you were mentioning. So very interesting uh, perspective you were talking about. Thanks for that. Um, you were mentioning that there is some more space for uh, one of uh, your colleagues, one of uh, the people doing practical projects. And so this is probably the moment um, I would invite uh, our last guest uh, for today to share a bit uh, her experience and Guoda, or please correct me your right pronunciation. <laughs> Hello everybody, I am uh, Guada, uh, so you were really close, uh, <laughs> congratulations to that. Uh, and uh, yeah, I wanted to share the, yeah, I can uh, share our, my screen uh, because, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, oh sorry, this, yeah, uh, so uh, I would like to stick to the time limit, uh, but uh, it's uh, quite a, a big thing to tell you about, so uh, I will try to keep it short. Uh, so uh, almost 10 years ago, uh, high school, school schoolers, I was uh, the one uh, also in the in the group, uh, decided that we wanted to make uh, uh, politicians accountable. Uh, and uh, how to do so? Uh, we were figuring out a bunch of things, uh, What, how us youngsters uh, uh, could do so, uh, even though we didn't have a lot of support from our own age group, uh, because back then, one out of 10 uh, uh, youngsters told that they are interested in politics. So 10% uh, in Lithuania, 10% uh, of youngsters in Lithuania uh, was interested in politics. Uh, so uh, uh, Erasmus Plus was uh, the the only one who believed in us that we can uh, come up with something uh, uh, cool and uh, and uh, yeah and here we are uh, next year we are celebrating our tenth uh, birthday uh, and uh, we became a quite big thing uh, in Lithuania uh, so I will skip all the short all the long story in between. 10 years ago and back then and come just to, to present what we are doing and how we are embracing democracy and young people participation in it. Uh, so we are volunteers network. Uh, so we are, uh, we do not have any hierarchy. We gather around 300 volunteers uh, every year uh, to, to take action do, during elections and uh, between elections time. Uh, so we are really embracing the initiative. So if I have something, if I know, if I have an idea to do something in this field, uh, I chat with others. And uh, if I have a support, uh, uh, I'm the one who will carry on my, my idea uh, in our uh, network. And it's youth initiative uh, and it's online platform. So basically all our volunteers are gathered uh, through all Lithuania, all 60 municipalities. Uh, and uh, we are chatting via <laughs> online. And also we have an online platform uh, where, uh, where you will see what we are doing there <laughs> later on. Uh, so when we started uh, to, to think how to make politicians accountable, uh, we uh, we thought that we, we need to get all the politicians in the same place at the same time uh, to 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 discuss issues that matters to people and not to see them only on uh, on a screen, not to see them one standing uh, above others and uh, telling their truths. Uh, so now is no karanko. the name uh, translates learn before you vote or I learn what I vote for. Uh, it's a platform uh, where we gather politicians, voters, uh, and journalists uh, in our made-up platform uh, where everyone meets and discuss the ideas, ask the questions what they need to, what they want to uh, ask, uh, they deliver uh, the ideas what they want to deliver, and they are tracked there. Uh, so... Mm, uh, learn before you vote uh, goes uh, to three different uh, actions that we are doing. Uh, 
Uh, so first, it's uh, educational part. So uh, we understood that education is important. Then watchdogging and uh, debates. Uh, so I will uh, elaborate on each of them uh, uh, through each slide. Uh, so education and board games, we have uh, us with our volunteers, youngsters, uh, this uh, elaborated uh, education and board games, how to speak with to youngsters about politics. Because we, we believe that it's not only important to, to come to vote, not only to encourage people to vote, but also to to make it uh, um, to make a cautious vote and know what why are why are you voting for one or other politician or or the list. Uh, so uh, we gather uh, we go through schools, organizations, and other uh, groups of people who invite us and uh, and. Uh, do uh, educations and uh, board games that we de developed with other uh, Erasmus Plus pro project uh, and speak about uh, the power of different institutions, EP, Parliament, Presidency and uh, and uh, Municipality. Uh, we also see how, uh, what kind of uh, promises or, or, or personal strengths uh, are most important for us while we are choosing the mayor, the parliament member or others. Uh, how to what do you need to to what do you need uh, what it is needed for politician uh, to make uh, your promise uh, valid to make it come true uh, and so on and so on because we understood that uh, to get the youngsters to the voting part or to debates part uh, it's quite tough and uh, they need to, to get uh, get to know something more about in the field uh, to to get around and to understand what what to look there and what to search for there to 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 make uh, uh, the the selection. Uh, also, we are organizing debates. Actually, this is the most um, most famous part that we are. Uh, so we are uh, each election uh, we are organizing debates around all Lithuania. Uh, so this year we had uh, municipal elections. Uh, in 60 municipalities, so in one month, one and a half month, because there was second round somewhere, uh, we managed to, to make 86 debates uh, around Lithuania. Debates are moderated with national journalists, which is also our, who is also our volunteers, because they're doing it uh, uh, voluntarily. We are covering only their uh, gas uh, <laughs> bills and, uh, and that's it. Uh, and with the youngsters, uh, national uh, media journalists are collaborating, uh, making uh, questions, uh, gathering all the information about the candidates, uh, and then uh, uh, organizing other, organizing and moderating debates. Uh, our rates are quite uh, good. 86% of, um, of, uh, of, uh, of politicians comes to, elect, uh, comes to our debates. Uh, and uh, this year also we had a really great partnership with the national broadcaster. So all the debates were streamed not only in our Facebook on, or YouTube, uh, but also in uh, uh, in national media channel. Uh, so uh, it was uh, it was uh, quite a quite big thing that uh, this is the thing that where uh, where people all the politicians come to one place. They are asked the same questions. You can select who is uh, better and also in our debates our huge part is uh, questions from the audience so that uh, the 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 people who are living there and not the journalists so not i can come up with the questions uh, but the people can ask the real questions what they are interested in and what they want to see to the next uh, uh, election and the last but not least is watchdog uh, so firstly, when we decide, when we we came up with the with the idea to 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 make this uh, uh, initiative come true, uh, we thought about uh, watchdog. It's uh, how to track politicians' promises. So in our debates, uh, the last question always it always is three promises, pledges, pledges that you can give to audio, to to the voters that you will do uh, if you will be elected. Uh, so. Uh, uh, in last uh, municipal uh, cadency, uh, we made a pilot uh, watchdogging. Uh, we ch we checked uh, those promises and how they are how they came how they became true. Uh, it was a pilot thing for us because we were 
checking all the stuff and you know it's for youngsters it's also a demanding because when there is election happening and everything is going uh, uh, and you are on top of everything because you're uh, you're everyone wants to be heard everyone wants to talk to you and now this watchdogging part it's quite demanding because you need to to look through all the strategy documents of the municipality all the budgets find out if it's if it comes true uh chat with the uh, mayor if if it's not uh, he or she is uh, not that interested to chat because it's not election period uh so uh, so yeah so now we are uh, developing our uh, watchdogging uh, uh methodology uh, and we'll come back uh, in the beginning of next of this of next year already uh, with uh, with it and uh, try to keep uh, the promises and try to track the promises and uh, also next year in Lithuania there is president uh, EP and the parliament elections in only one year so we have a, a lot of things to do and uh, we want to encourage uh, uh, active participation of youngsters uh, to the elections but also know what they vote for and uh, that they could do that they would do the research behind it uh and we are we are giving the tools how to make it uh, how to make it come uh, true that's it for me thanks goda <laughs> Uh, thanks for this very practical approach and for the link to the elections, uh, upcoming elections next year, and uh, also for this very concrete example of connecting the topic, uh, the, the influence of youth program and uh, democratic participation and election and the different levels and uh, initiatives you do for it. So very interesting to listen to it. Thanks, thanks for that. Well, thanks for this different... Um, point of views and connections to these topics, to democracy, democ democratic participation, to solidarity, to volunteering. We hope that now we have some time to discuss a bit on those topics and to um, link it a bit. And therefore, uh, I would invite um, our moderator for the, up, for the next panel discussion, for the next um, 20, 20, uh, 20 minutes, half an hour, uh, Paula, maybe you can introduce yourself and uh, enjoy the next discussion round and the, the questions. Yeah, thank you a lot. I'm very happy to be here as well. Um, for the next half an hour, I have the honor to moderate a bit through the uh, panel discussion. But before I can also briefly say some words about myself, um, I'm actually a very active participant of all those programs which have just been presented. So my journey with the ESC program started four years ago when I did my voluntary service in Hungary in a very small village for one year. And it was amazing. I connected very much uh, to the story Chris shared. So um, I was like in the small village and had a very good connection to the local um, inhabitants there. And from there on, my journey continued. I decided to study European studies in the south of Germany, where I'm still uh, based writing my bachelor thesis. And I had two amazing Erasmus funded semesters abroad in France, for example. I'm very active also in participating in Erasmus youth exchanges. So I'm like really using all the colorful um, palette, which is, is there for participation. And I'm also active in the Europeus network, which uh, Marie already presented, uh, which is amazing. It's a really an amazing opportunity. So uh, if you never heard about it, uh, I encourage you to check out the website. It's, it's really a good approach, I think. And then um, here in the city where I'm based, I'm also participating, um, also part of two solidarity projects, which are maybe not yet so common, I would say, but uh, Chris also mentioned them. And uh, it's what you said as well, that um, people who are engaged in voluntary projects, maybe abroad, they also stay engaged then when they come back to the local community and uh, which I definitely can confirm. It's the case uh, for me, which is amazing. And then um, I'm also hosting or co-hosting like a podcast about promoting uh, Erasmus Plus and ESC possibilities. So I'm quite familiar with all the programs, but rather from the uh, participant side, side, I would say. And uh, also to share maybe my short association about volunteering. I really like the idea uh, from you, Elizabeth, of the different flowers, although I would maybe rather um, point like the, 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 the single flower out because 
like in order to create something beautiful, in this case, the flower, you need like different people who care about different tasks, like the one needs to flower the, the, uh, the to water the flower, the other one uh, needs to buy maybe the good soil for it. So like um, you need the the mixture of different skills in order to make something beautiful. So that is the association which first popped into my mind. All right. I pretty much enjoyed that you uh, all gave more or less like concrete examples uh, about how how volunteering um, can support democratic values. But like the thing I often face the problem is um, that it's clear what is volunteering, it's more or less clear what's democracy, but the term solidarity is not very tangible for people who are maybe new to the whole ESC and Erasmus Plus program. So maybe could you um, give one concrete example from your work or from your projects, um, like in which way volunteering or participating in those projects can strengthen uh, solidarity? Because uh, I often face the challenge that I can't explain uh, why it's so important. You already mentioned some example, but I would like to invite you. Uh, maybe we can do another quick round uh, to share maybe very concrete examples if you can't think of any. And whoever uh, wants to start, I can give you the floor first and then we can do a quick round. Um, okay, maybe uh, to, to, to start off, since, as I mentioned, I'm the Solidarity Project Officer, and as you said, maybe they're not so popular, especially in the parts of Europe uh, where there are also uh, more national alternatives to acquire financing. To be fair, they're quite popular around here. Um, and yeah, one very great example uh, came to my mind from a, a solidarity project activity that, um, well, does what you did. The idea of the of the project was uh, for a group of young people to come together with another group of uh, young people that are uh, uh, that are uh, hearing impaired. And they would uh, work on methods uh, for theater that would include all of these, uh, uh, all of the youngsters. And uh, actually, in the end, it uh, turned out to be two like uh, projects, one after another, that built upon one another. And they started with the in the first project, the like big result was actually a proper uh, theater play, uh, mostly in sign language. Uh, and also, since it happened during COVID, they had to adjust many things, including creating like a pilot uh, play via using Zoom very, uh, very uh, imaginatively, like really <laughs> using the platform, not just to be there, but like, uh, yeah, using it for the effect of... And, uh, and the following project then built on this, they extracted these methods, how to create a group of these of young people with different uh, needs and uh, what methods to use in order to create uh, yeah, theater that includes um, youngsters that are hearing impaired. Um, and, uh, and yeah, and this has uh, also the long-term effect of uh, um, these uh, uh, directly, these 10 young people that were the pro uh, project groups into different projects, uh, but also around, I think, uh, 30 or 40 other youngsters that are uh, very now fluent, like in sign language, they have this theater troupe and uh, the methods they have devel developed are being used in order to make these more inclusive uh, uh, theater ways um, and uh, yeah for me this is kind of a good example of, of uh, solidarity and also what I mentioned that maybe uh, uh, quite a different maybe groups or maybe groups of different needs coming together and creating this uh, universal approach to something that everybody can enjoy. 
thank you so much for sharing. This is like a very nice example, I guess, uh, because it refers to something which Marie, I think, uh, said already, that it's also about sharing different perspectives on, on the reality. So I think that's a great example. Thank you so much. And in the meantime, um, Gosha, yeah, I give you the floor. And before I quickly just wanted to mention also to the audience that, of course, you can also uh, ask some que questions on the Mentimeter. Just click on the link and you can enter your questions uh, for our panelists if you have one. So Gosha. You want to share something? Yeah. So you ask about solidarity. Of course, uh, yeah, everybody understands it differently, but we believe that it's a common value for for Europe that we share the commitment to 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 the benefits of communities of uh, Europeans. So, and through our actions, we can show the solidarity to to the people who need it. Um, and the solidarity projects, I'm very fan of it because uh, it's my action here uh, on the centralized level and. Um, I believe that it's very, through the small steps, we, we can learn on the large scale what we can do. And as you really nicely showed in your examples, we, we don't see so much uh, here from Brussels how the practice is done. We try to collect as many examples as possible. And I've heard about cleaning the beaches. I've heard about um, helping elderly during COVID isolation, bringing food uh, to the elderly or uh, um, we also focus on uh, helping refugees uh, from 2022, and there were lots of projects that refocused the activities to help uh, Ukrainian children with the sport activities, educational. So there's plenty, plenty possibilities, and we have all the collection on, on the projects uh, on the portal, so this can also inspire others what can be done for, for the community. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing also um, like the perspective maybe of those who are responsible for the political guidelines uh, working in Brussels, maybe not super tight connected uh, with the local ground, but also, I mean, this is what is the webinar also about just to share like uh, some different examples uh, on the ground and to connect them with maybe uh, people who are more in charge for the for the general lines. And I can pass the microphone, the <laughs> visual microphone, uh, maybe to Marie, because she might have also some uh, concrete examples of us. I was just thinking now when Gosha was talking um, about this link between the realities we have in Europe and then the theoretical level, basically like the, the center where the political guidelines and those rules and regulations are developed. And I think actually in order, like, I, I'll bring it down to the concrete examples, maybe in the European network, but more importantly, like before, uh, before we get to the concrete example for me, really, uh, it's essential that um, we all have so many different realities. And I think there's a lot of uh, European young people that maybe already grew up in a quite united and uh, like, good Europe and for them I think it is very essential to sort of like come together and understand that this is a concept that like is built on the foundation of us sort of like sticking together in this solidarity and if we don't keep this uh, spark alive then maybe this con conditions that we have right now they will also change again and therefore I really think that bringing the European programs and the union itself and democracy down to a level that can be understood from young people that think it's maybe a bureaucratic or dry process. I think that's really essential, making, making it accessible to people that think it's maybe boring and not for me. And that's what we really manage through these different uh, project opportunities and programs that we have created and that all of us here in some way keep alive um, and and therefore yeah I think that's just really important it just popped into my mind and and I I know that I said before Europeans they are former volunteers that have decided to stay active uh, a lot of them in their active uh, period of Europeering uh, they write uh, projects and apply for funding and then implement uh, projects for people so in a way they they give back and share this experience and provide a space for 
for other people in the network. So um, it's hard for me to pick uh, one specific example now, but I, I just know that we have done um, a lot of uh, advertisement for the last European elections and there's a lot of plans in the pipelines now for the upcoming ones so uh, the European community can count on young former volunteers to definitely promote in their way and hopefully by that also engage especially a younger uh, audience in the voting process that would maybe not necessarily otherwise be super interested so um, yeah that's uh, what I have to say here right now. I have it wasn't too much all over the place. I pass my invisible microphone back over to you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. But I think it's really interesting and really um, good that you mentioned also maybe possible threats. Uh, as you said, I'm also a person who grew up, uh, who's growing up in a very united uh, Europe where I can just go to Austria, go to France uh, without any border control, with the same currency and everything. I think it's also really, really important that we keep in mind that it's not a given naturally. So it's it's like something worth for fighting about, which uh, on which we can come back later. But first, I would also like to uh, give the chance to, for Gouda uh, to to share maybe the practical example, if you want. Yeah, thank you. Uh, when, while I was, was listening to all of you, because when you asked the question, I wasn't sure that I am I'm the one to answer it. Uh, uh, just popped into my mind that uh, uh, you need solidarity to make any project uh, that is like anything if you want to get done with a group of people you have to have solidarity and uh, and sometimes it's easier because it's your friends group sometimes it's tougher because uh, you have a wider broader uh, broader group of people uh, that you that you want or you need to to make on on the same background at least to put on, on the field but basically uh, solidarity is like if you want to be a participant or you want to to, to live in EU or, or, or wherever, in any society, uh, there is uh, at least a pinch of so solidarity that uh, it is asked for you to bring up uh, on the stage, on the pool. Yeah. Thank you. And now I would like to um, maybe go a bit deeper into the challenges uh, when it comes to promoting solidarity through volunteering, because this is also what we need to talk about. I think in this uh, context, we all agree that it's very, very much important for promoting democratic values. But the, the crucial point is how can we overcome like challenges uh, which are on our way there? And maybe now we can do it the other way around. So um, Goda, if you would like to start, if you already have like an answer, uh, that would be amazing. If not, we can um, maybe hear someone else. First. Yes, yeah, so um, I think that the challenges and the and the things that I think when you you are collecting or or inviting volunteers to join uh, to join you or your idea or your network or your organization or whatever, uh, it's very important to understand uh, to to have an idea and to present the idea and gather volunteers by the idea and not by something. Uh, uh some something in the bag i think that the honest uh, approach with volunteers honest uh, uh, understanding what we are seeking for in this particular project in this particular field in this particular organization is the the, the main thing also what we are hearing that uh, someone thinks that oh you have so many volunteers so there you can do that and that and that but that's also not true because uh, you have to respect uh, because there are other human beings that you have to respect their time. You have to respect that they can decline to do whatever it's not comfortable for them or they don't want to do that because they, they can be volunteers in many, many, many organizations and they can pick only the things that they really, really uh, uh, want or or be part of. Uh, so, uh, so and, uh, and the other thing is that... Um, well, while I when I was volunteering and I'm still actually am, but uh, but I, when I was entering the other uh, other organizations, uh, I came there for the network, for the friends, for the friends group, for for the uh, for the support and everything that is around me, not only in this field that we are in. So I think that also respectful and generous and. Uh, uh, and friendly approach to the volunteers so uh, with, uh, with high respect it's uh, it's much needed in every every field that is that is there 
yeah, from a personal uh, experience, I can also confirm that it's very difficult also to have a good time management, especially when you're volunteering, because you still have maybe a normal job or normal um, yeah. studying next to it. And I think it's really important also to keep in mind on the mental health of volunteers, because not to take too much task, not to take too much responsibilities. Um, this is also very important. So that's like a definite, like big challenge, I think also, which um, yeah. volunteer projects have, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing. And I think now, like Marie, if you want to share something, uh, which challenges you have faced in your daily work, uh, that would be lovely. I think I tried to mention it uh, before when I was talking already that we all are in different realities and connected to those different realities. We have all very different starting conditions. And one challenge that I encounter when I'm trying to create training opportunities for my network members is that based on where they are from and what reality they have, they will have different needs. And it isn't easy to cater to everyone's needs in one activity and make everyone feel comfortable to attend and be there. And I think also based on the different needs we have, we, we might you know see volunteering as an absolute must do, but if we are not doing already really well or we're you know having our basic needs all covered then maybe we just simply don't see like time or anything available for committing to volunteering or a solidarity project so like in a way that is i think to develop this um understands understanding and the sensitivity to realities and different realities that we have within europe uh, that that is one thing I encounter daily, I think, and I've mentioned as well that I feel we're reaching a lot like a similar already quite privileged sort of target group for our alumni network, and we're constantly trying to to figure out better ways how to engage other people as well that are not just in this homogenous group sort of because it's important to 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 focus on the diversity we have and to make sure we are easily accessible and inclusive for people from all sorts of realities and uh, I think yeah that that's one of the biggest challenges I encounter and I'm not sure if I have found a perfect solution for it but we are working on it daily. Thanks for being also so honest uh, because I mean I, as I said before um, volunteering can result in a very beautiful flower but it can maybe also result in a not so beautiful Cactus, cactin, I don't know. <laughs> so there's also something I think uh, we need to keep in mind that it doesn't always have to work out 100%, which is completely fine. Also to fail if you want to um, label this at, at fa uh, failing, uh, but also like to gain experience through actually something which doesn't work so well. So I think that's also something like a, like a challenge, but also something you can turn into a very nice learning outcome, I guess. And passing on to uh, Gashia, do you also have like some ideas uh, what in your work is maybe also challenging uh, when it comes to promoting uh, the mobility programs? Yeah, I, I was thinking more about the uh, obstacles for uh, promotion democratic values in general, like what's going on in nowadays with misinformation and fake news, uh, of course, but also uh, with this different backgrounds that uh, my colleague speaker were also mentioning because we are coming from not the same environment so it's uh it's very easy to forget sometimes uh that's uh that we can differ from each other and also the lack of uh civic engagement from young people not being interested in politics uh, feeling a bit disconnected so first to show that these opportunities uh, exist for the program, so uh, to get with the information and then to interest and engage people through volunteering or other exchanges that we, we can offer. So I think this is the main uh, challenge for us and also to keep this engagement and to keep this um, interest in them, not only like, OK, there is a nice opportunity, I will subscribe and then remain maybe a bit um, indifferent to this. So um, I think from us, for us, from our perspective, is first to, to, to get with the information that this possibility uh, exists and then inspire yeah, young people to participate. Thank you. Definitely. I think it's also like a, like a step from just seeing those opportunities which are out there uh, and then taking the next step to actually take the initiative and, and go out there, which is maybe in the beginning a bit frightening because it's new people 
new structure, maybe even new country, which uh, is not very familiar. But I think it's uh, yeah quite important, as you say, also. All right. And then uh, the last challenge or the last idea for <laughs> challenges mm -hmm. uh, by Chris. Yeah, maybe, maybe I have one uh, one challenge that wasn't mentioned, but also I wanted to maybe also just to build a little bit on what Gosha said uh, about uh, this need for working democracy that uh, requires participation and that uh, in the youth part, maybe it's not like it, it, it could be improved. Uh, uh, but the other part for for me and also for my work, uh, which I see maybe that there is this generational divide and uh, maybe uh, the need for more solidarity in between different uh, generations. So since after all, we do live in still like majority vote uh, democracies mostly, meaning that uh, even, and we are an aging society, meaning even if there is improving and, uh, and developing uh, participation of, uh, from the part of youth, they might still be often not so happy about the results. <laughs> and, and, and maybe there is this uh, real need to, to find more this common ground also when it comes to different generations. And again, I feel like there are many possibilities in EU programs to do this. Um, uh, and the other maybe challenge, uh, which I think we also face is this, different national uh, realities and uh, when it clashes with the European values and then and, and, and that is not always the easiest thing to to uh, <laughs> to be on the same page with these two uh, things. Uh, just an example from my from this uh, my first uh, year, in the agency, we were getting like quite published uh, backlash at some point where there was a uh, there was a project uh, about uh, if I'm not correct the, the 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 topic maybe wasn't the most important part but maybe it was about about the reproduction of health uh, sexual education etc. However, the uh, the materials were made also in Russian. Uh, since it was uh, the yeah very specifically part of the target audience, and then you know uh, some just internet active warriors found this uh, project, uh, found the uh, connection to to our agency that we have been the ones offering the uh, the budget, finding some run like just a colleague that has a Russian sounding name. And like uh, starting to like point out, oh, this person must have uh, cor uh, in a corruptive ways, like given this uh, money to promote like uh, Russian agenda, etc. When the topic, of course, was like, the, well, it didn't make no sense. So, and I imagine this uh, can be the reality with many topics in many countries, <laughs> and 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 there is no like uh, common antidote. Uh, and and even if we all strive for European values, we need this um, uh, local uh, local uh, you know ways to to deal with the specific um, issues and, and and challenges like this. Definitely. I think like the, the big idea is for uh, United Europe, but the things where you know, the, 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 um, the level where things are changed is definitely the local one. So I think that's also quite challenging to connect them always. <laughs> and we have one question uh, from the audience, which is also our last question, because we have to slowly come to an end. And, and I invite you to uh, be a bit brief on that so we can all um, enjoy a uh, Nice afternoon, I guess. <laughs> so the uh, the question from the audience is, um, what are the priorities for strengthening democracy in Europe? And I would like to uh, connect this question also with the upcoming European elections, uh, which some of you already mentioned, um, because I think this is something where a lot of good advocacy is needed, I guess, in order to bring uh, as many people as possible uh, to the voting polls. And uh, so, yeah, I can repeat it again. What are the priorities for strengthening democracy in Europe? And I would suggest that we now do again the other round and starting uh, with Chris, if you 
want to uh, share something. And okay, then since I don't have too much time to think and we need to try to be brief, I will just sh go with the first things that come to my mind, which definitely is like critical thinking and media or content literacy in general, uh, as uh, as I think both in our work and in our daily work, uh, life, we can see uh, that there is this huge uh, increasing divide. And, 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 and I feel like maybe the overwhelming amount of information is uh, and not being able to process it properly since our like brains are not made like evolution hasn't caught up yet for that is a uh, really challenging and can lead up to well many not so nice results as we see from here to there yeah thank you so much i guess uh, that's also again a very important and big topic about media and uh, media consumption especially on social media which is also very important when it comes to uh, campaigning and the election Thanks. And we can move on to Gosia, if you want to share something. Yeah, I was thinking what uh, what are the objectives, actually, what we want to promote for the elections uh, during our European Youth Week events. And we, we, we have four objectives. We want to empower young people to become active and engaged citizens. So in that way, encourage them to vote. We also want to highlight achievements in the in the field of youth. And the third one is promote opportunities through the programs that are uh, available for young people. And uh, the fourth one is draw attention to the priority issues uh, of relevance to young people like uh, green digital uh, inclusion or participation. So I think this is very relevant for, for, for this as well. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much. And I think it's also important to um, take concerns or opinions of young people very seriously um, for strengthening democracy and all, also in order um, for them to be motivated to go voting in June. Thank you. And we can move on to Marie. Um, yeah, I'm thinking very much in my network focused right now. And as we are um, promoting European values in the European community, we really want to create campaigns that are maybe focusing on the younger voters to engage our sort of peer group into the election process, uh, which goes a lot hand in hand with what my previous speakers have said, uh, which is being very careful in how you communicate things, uh, including critical thinking and checking what's out on the different channels in times of, uh, I don't know, artificial intelligence and and like online trolls and so on. And I think also what you just said, uh, giving young people the feeling that their voices matter and that their voices are heard. And that you can do by different things, but like generally reminding them of the power they have, I think is already a quite big step and I'm uh, doing my best to get us there. Thank you so much. And I think it connects uh, very well, actually, <laughs> to Gauda's uh, project, which she is running together uh, with her team, because as far as I understood, uh, you are actually doing this more or less what Marie just mentioned. <laughs> so uh, what do you think, uh, what is like a big priority or big um yeah, priority for. Yeah, for sorry, you were you were lagging a bit. I, I understand it's my was my interest <laughs> internet, so that's why I was <laughs> I wasn't there for a sec. Uh so what when we were our network is thinking about elections and uh, especially EP elections, uh, we understand that there is some lack lack of understanding uh, of what does EP do, what actually power does it has, how it influence. Uh, my life on the daily basis. Uh, so um, we are, we will do a round of debates uh, around Lithuania in the rural rural areas, uh, uh, mostly at least twenty debates. And we understand that it's maybe not so popular as uh, presidential uh, debates, mayor debates, or parliamentary debates. Uh, but we take it as an as educational step, as showing people, uh, not only youth, but uh, all the people, what EP actually, what uh, MEP can do. Uh, the moderator role is there really important because uh, it has to make a full stop and say that there, this is not the thing that you can do in EP or or so on. Uh, so I think that basically the understanding how 
all institutions affect my daily base base life and uh, how important it is for me uh, to to be a part of it and and, uh, and have my voice heard. Uh, it's uh, it's a crucial thing, despite all the others that uh, that my colleagues mentioned before. Thank you so much. I think now this round especially gave a very good overview in what uh, which role um, those programs solidarity. Core as well as Erasmus Plus can play in order to strengthen democracy. And I thank you very much also for the panel discussion. Also, thanks to the audience uh, for the questions. Now I will hand over the floor uh, again back to Elizabeth. Thank you. Thanks for everybody. Uh, very interesting topics you were mentioning. These examples, these diverse examples on how to bring bureaucracy programs down to the ground, for example, and pointing out the importance of solidarity for, for doing projects, like as base basic uh, element, but also the honesty of showing that there are very challenging aspects too. And one uh, topic that, uh, Gosha, you were mentioning um, that was connecting quite a lot to what we also are, plan to do in the in the next webinars the the topic of disinformation from from media the, the problems uh, connected to that and this is maybe also a good link uh, to invite you to use this last minute to invite you to the next uh, webinars already next week uh, at 11 a.m on the 7th of december this, the topic on how does democracy connect with network science, AI, and augmented realities, and also to connect it with a practical example. And the week after, the 14th of December, to connect uh, the topic of the supporting use, participation, and volunteering, and how and if it can impact the 2024 European elections. So also maybe to connect to today's uh, very interesting panel discussion. Before you leave, uh, I would uh, invite you for a very short evaluation and the link will be in the chat in a second. And uh, while you hopefully have a, a second to, to answer on that, my moment to say thank you. Thanks, Gosha and Chris and Marie and Gorda for these very interesting topics and the connections and the different point of views and how to bring it all together and to show the importance of it. Uh, thanks, Paula, for the lively moderation and very nice personal connection to it. And um, thanks for both Saltos for organizing it and for uh, inviting us to these interesting webinars. Thanks for listening. Have a nice afternoon in case there is still light at your place at Mining Stark already. <laughs> See you uh, next week, hopefully. Enjoy.